want you to hit me as hard as you can. Ever since the release of Justice League in 2017, fans have wanted to know what the Zack Snyder version of the movie would have been like. Man of Steel and Batman v Superman had received mixed reviews. Some despised Zack Snyder's take on the material, while others absolutely adored it. While still credited as director, fans know Snyder had very little to do with what originally hit theaters, having stepped down at one point due to a variety of reasons, including a horrible family tragedy that we won't go into here, and big creative battles with the studio. Joss Whedon stepped in, and I'm sure it all seemed like a great idea at the time. After all, Whedon had long been a fan favorite director for his work with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Firefly, and leading the Avengers to box off his glory over at Marvel Studios. Who could possibly be better to help the Justice League finally make their debut on the big screen? Well, it turns out anybody would have been better. While the film still did respectable business, fans were extremely unhappy with the final project, and even later, word began to circulate of trouble on the set of the Whedon-led film, particularly from Ray Fisher, who played Cyborg, a character everybody knows by now, was sidelined in the film. Fans began to clamor for the original vision Zack Snyder had for the film and the hashtag release the Snyder Cut was born. Warner Brothers seemed reluctant to even acknowledge that such a thing existed. Repeatedly, they said that Snyder never got that far into the film and that financially, it would be too expensive to try and assemble such a thing. But surely nothing could ever make the release of the film a reality. Saying it out to theaters would be costly and really, would filmgoers go to the theaters to see a movie that had just come out a few years earlier all over again? Welcome HBO Max to the table. The streaming wars had begun heating up in the last few years. Netflix seemed to have a firm hold on the market while companies like Hulu and Amazon Prime and the field. Even with this competition, Netflix still reigned, but soon Disney threw its hat into the ring and was followed by Warner Brothers. Seeing the success of HBO Go, they decided to try their hand at a full-fledged Warner Brothers streaming service. Pulling on the various libraries they owned, they set out to compile content and add new properties exclusive to the new streaming service HBO Max. One that no one seemed to count on was the Snyder Cut of Justice League. Seeing it as an opportunity to bring a lot of subscribers to the soon-to-be-launching platform, Warner Brothers greenlit the release of the Snyder Cut. More money was allocated to allow Snyder to shoot a handful of new scenes as well as overhaul the visual effects of the movie. Release the Snyder Cut, against all odds, had worked. When they announced it would be coming to HBO Max, fanboys rejoiced, but how long would the wait be? While they kept teasing it was coming, they were reluctant to give it a release date until finally in January 2021, it was announced that fans only had to wait two more months. Now here we are, the Snyder Cut has been unleashed upon the world, and while there's still the question of whether it's the Justice League movie everyone wanted, the actual film seemed to leave things pretty open-ended. While Snyder has said that Warner Brothers wanted to cul-de-sac the film so that it was a one-and-done experience, he instead ended it how he originally intended, maybe even more open-ended than he had originally planned, to be honest. After the movie was released, the hashtag released the Snyder Cut morphed into Restore the Snyderverse. Could Snyder have purposely left the film open to almost force Warner Brothers to continue his planned story arc? Only Snyder knows for sure, but with how he's been talking, he doesn't seem to think that Warner Brothers is planning on moving forward with any of his sequels. During numerous interviews, he laid out his plans for the next two Justice League films. As seen in Batman v Superman, the groundwork had been laid for a dystopian future where Batman was forced to fight for humanity's survival. During Batman v Superman, we saw Batman in a desert location being captured by parademons and taken to a stronghold where Superman shows up and unmasks him. Just as things look the most grim for Bruce, he's awakened by a blinding light as Barry Allen, the Flash, appears to tell him that Lois Lane is the key before he disappears. At the time, this all seemed kind of weird and kind of misplaced. Neither event had actually played into the story of the film, so why was Lois the key? To defeating Superman? I mean, that was Batman's goal all the way through the movie. And audiences always tend to grow at big scenes being shown to be only a dream. What was this appearance by Barry Allen? Up to this point, the character hadn't even been mentioned in the film. While most comic book fans are used to seeing Barry Allen time travel, for the casual moviegoer, they had no idea if this was supposed to actually mean something. It only made them more confused and wonder if they missed something at the beginning of the film. After seeing the Snyder Cut, it made a lot more sense as to where the story was heading. In the Snyder Cut, we see a lot more of the groundwork set by Snyder to get us into this future. Lois is able to calm the resurrected Clark before he destroyed the rest of the Justice League. Then in a scene that had been hyped for months, we get another glimpse into the future. Again, we're presented with Batman and his desert gear, but now we know that Darkseid has been heading to Earth to take it over. This time we get to see that he assembled a ragtag group of heroes and villains to take the fight to an evil Superman. For Justice League 2, we would have been put into the nightmare reality. Darkseid came to Earth ready to battle the world's heroes and to find the anti-life equation. With this, he can control anyone he sets his sights on. Upon arriving, the ever-loathsome Lex Luthor would 
buddy up to Darkseid in an effort to get rid of the Man of Steel, he would tell him the key to Superman's weakness is to kill Lois Lane. With her gone, he would be so brokenhearted that he would be susceptible to the anti-life equation and would be Darkseid's to control. With Superman at his side, his taking of Earth would be unstoppable. Lex seems okay with total domination as long as the Kryptonian was defeated. Whether he would be okay with Superman taking over the world at Darkseid's side is unknown. The speculation would be that Lex would feel duped. Instead of the Man of Steel dead, he was now ruling the planet. This didn't seem to align with what Lex would want since usually his goal is to be in charge. With Superman now roaming the planet to make sure there's no uprising that would displease Darkseid, Lex's greatest fears would have actually come true. When the Justice League comes together to confront Darkseid, Superman tells Batman to protect Lois with his life. When Darkseid's minions come for Batman, he fails to save her. Snyder had said that the plan would have been for them to have gotten into an argument and been separated. The reason for this argument would be that during the time Clark was dead, he had actually fallen in love with Lois. Snyder did say that Warner Brothers had nixed the idea, so who knows what we would have gotten instead. Lois is killed, and as predicted, Darkseid uses the anti-life equation to put Superman under his control. Batman has now put together a new Justice League consisting of Barry Allen, Deathstroke, as played by Joe Manganiello, Cyborg, Mira, and of all people, Jared Leto's Joker. After acquiring the Mother Box, the goal would have been to send Barry Allen back in time using the item. Here he could help fix the timeline and keep Superman on the hero side during their battle with Darkseid. It would have ended on a big downer with only a small hope of everything turning out okay. For the third Justice League movie, it would have picked up where part two had left off. Barry had been sent back to try and prevent Lois from dying. This is where the scene from Batman v Superman would have come full circle. It turns out Barry overshot when he was trying to land. After jumping ahead to the correct time, talking to Bruce, he understands his mistake and does everything he can to keep Lois safe. This leads to Batman sacrificing himself to save Lois. From this point forward, everything we'd seen changes. Aquaman leads a charge of Atlanteans to the surface. Wonder Woman gathers the Amazons, and Superman leads the humans in an all-out battle to save the planet. The world is united against Darkseid, and now the Justice League does truly represent the world in their efforts to fight justice. Some of the things Snyder teased were that we'd see more of the new gods. In the Snyder Cut, we got a glimpse of Granny Goodness, but Big Bardo was name-dropped to have played a role in the third film. He likened the third movie to a new gods invasion film. At the end of the battle with Darkseid, we would have seen that Clark and Lois would have had a son. This was teased in the Snyder Cut, with the pregnancy test being seen in the last shot. In honor of Batman sacrifice, they would end up naming him Bruce. On the 20th anniversary of his death, they were going to take Bruce Kent to the Batcave to show him who his namesake really was. This alludes to Bruce Kent taking up the Batman mantle in the future. Would this have been a satisfying trilogy or fiveology if you include Band of Steel and Batman v Superman? Sadly, we'll never know. Some of the action sequences probably would have been pretty good. Kevin Smith did allude to a conversation he had with Snyder that would have seen a larger battle on Apocalypse between New Gods and the Green Lantern Corps. This finally would have brought modern day lanterns into the DCEU. Thus far, they had only been shown in flashbacks to previous battles with Darkseid or quick glimpses in the nightmare scenes. Originally, the cameo by Martian Manhunter at the end of the Snyder Cut was meant to be Jon Stewart. WB again nixed this. The only reasoning could be that they didn't want to debut any Green Lanterns before the upcoming HBO Max series hitting in 2022. If Warner Brothers decides to go for more Snyderverse movies, it will have to be seen if they keep the storylines that Snyder had now put on the internet. While it would be easy to say that this will never happen, we also thought that getting the Snyder Cut of Justice League would never happen. If there is money to be made, Warner Brothers could easily change their minds and make another HBO Max exclusive series of films. The bolstering of subscriptions to HBO Max seems to be something they are keen on keeping going. So what better way to keep people subscribing than churning out films and series that already have a dedicated fan base? For now, though, these sequels will have to live through the storylines that Snyder has put forth. A battle for a planet between the mighty heroes of the Justice League against the all-powerful new gods. If that's not enough, there's always room for more stories or discovering old stories in the comic book pages these characters were born on. They're our favorite characters, will never age, never die, and always triumph in the end, which is something we could all use right now. Anyway, thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content. Turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company, and we appreciate all of your support. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments below.